Tedi Ladaki uh, community. This is the harmony. As a Ladaki, I think very good. Uh, different religion, uh, different race. However, you all, human being, and Ladakhis, so you have to live together. This is too much the emphasis, I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist, I'm Jain, I'm Christian. This is too much sort of uh, emphasis on differences. It is not healthy one. Firstly, we all human being. We all born human way with mother. So young children, you see, all consider. So long, person who smiling, helping, that is more important. Young children never thought what is religion, Christian, Muslim, Buddhism. That was secondary. Important is we human being. Uh, I also, is basically, simply one human being. Uh, so on that basis, 
Wherever I go, I always, you see, consider we are same. Seven billion human beings, same. The way we born, the way we die, same. So while we little grown up and also the less emphasis, oneness of we are human, same human being, but rather my religion, their religion, my race, their race, my country, their country. So if you use uh, my religion, my country, these properly, okay. But sometimes we too much emphasis the my religion, my community, my country, and then sometimes uh, a pro problem start. So one of my commitment is try to promote concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. We are the same. The way we born, all the seven billion human beings, same. The end of life, die. All seven billion human beings, same. So we must keep, we are human beings. We are human beings on this planet. So little, little differences, it's okay. Uh, so there is no point dividing because of religion, because of races. All these are our own mental creation. Basically, we are the same human being. So wherever I go, I always emphasis seven billion human beings are same. We all same way. So the concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. We disbelieve oh, and practice wherever I go. So long with human face, two eyes, one mouth, I immediately realize, yes, human brother. If I meet someone, three eyes, then I feel, oh, oh something different. <laughs> so we seven billion, we all same. So now important is firm belief, oneness of seven billion human beings. With this belief, I myself, with this belief, uh, wherever I go, uh, people welcoming, show friendly attitude. People always smile. I myself also, you see, uh, firstly, very good teeth. <laughs> so, uh, I show my teeth, smile. They also show smile. That's the way seven billion human beings on this planet, uh, when we born through mother, mother's milk and mother's compassion. The Indian tradition, Karuna Ahimsa, Karuna Compassion. Our life begins with Karuna. At the time of dying, surrounded with 
people who really shows you karuna you feel very happy so therefore the whether we believe religion or not we should be kind hearted person then your whole life firstly because of karuna practice practice or sort of concept of karuna you happy much happier that brings healthy body uh, and a healthy community so whether believe in religion or not we should be kind human being on the belief or uh, seven bill we are same we have to live together so that is my main uh, message wherever i go i myself from tibet when in reach india as a refugee i consider we are same so uh warm heartedness is some kind of secular ethics that's very important so according my own experience this warm heartedness there my physical also much much healthier and my mind much more peace happy so you my young brother sisters that you should think about warm heartedness and then through that way we can build happy human life on happy world is it too much emphasis we and they and weapon and produce a lot of weapons killing it is not answer to achieve happy humanity happy humanity uh, here the thousand year old indian tradition of karuna very important then different religion different races these are secondary basically we are human being uh, so om hatat uh, om hatness is the key factor we tibetan since 7th century the tibetan king Uh, although with marriage with chinese princess very close link but he uh decide we tibetan we should have our own writing so he uh developed tibetan writing uh more like devanagri 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 kaka kanga cha 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 nya like that so i think i really admire the tibetan kin songsa kambo was a very close relation with chinese emperor but he emphasis we should have our own writing then 8th century chusun tezen since you see he we follow nalanda tradition so he invited shantar rashita from nalanda top scholar and log- logician i am logic uh, his writing about logic about philosophy we can still read and study 
So, 8th century, the Chisun Tezen, he thought, now we have our own language, our own writing. Now important is translation. Many books from Bali uh, and more books from Sanskrit all together we have this Kanjur Tenjur. Kanjur about 100 volumes. Tenjur more than 200 volumes. Together 300 volumes. All translated from Pali or Sanskrit. So then we start our stud study in our own language. So now today, I think we Tibetan, we have a much wider, deeper understanding about the Nalanda tradition. So Nalanda in Buddhism, something about the mind, how to develop peace of mind. Not through just a prayer, but thinking, thinking, thinking. So that way, even, you see, one's own uh, so-called enemy who create uh, suffering to you, you can develop special compassion to them. Actually, troublemaker is best teacher of your inner strength. So in our case, in our Tibet case, we suffer a lot under Chinese communist control. But we consider it's a good opportunity to practice compassion. So very helpful. Now, uh, Tibet, politically Chinese communist control, but spiritually Tibetan uh, Buddhist understanding, Buddhist belief, very firm. Now more and more Chinese now following Tibetan Buddhism. So some of our translation reach in China, Lendru University. Of course, ordinary people cannot see because there is control. But those professors, some Lendru University professors, after saw these books which we wrote in India, they are very much impressed. They say, oh, Tibetan Buddhism is truly a Nalanda tradition. It is a scientific religion. So a number of Chinese really now showing interest. So that's, uh, I feel Tibetan richness is firstly our language, and secondly, all this translation from Nalanda master's writing. So I think today's world, as far as knowledge about mind, about emotion, and how to develop peace of mind, is the best tradition we kept in Tibet. Uh, and language also, Tibetan language is the best language to explain about our emotion and how to develop peace of mind. So, uh, Tibetan spirit kept with our own knowledge. Uh, so that is very important. Not a weapon, but deeper understanding about the human mind, human emotion. And 
keep peace of mind. So now, uh, some people say, uh, politically, as I mentioned earlier, politically, China controlled Tibet. But spiritually, eventually, eventually, we can help billions of Chinese, already many Chinese following Tibetan scientific Buddhist thinking. Okay. So that much I want to say. At Himalayan range, uh, people from Ladakh to men traditionally uh, follower of Buddha Dharma. But we can separate Buddha Dharma, Dharma as a religion uh, and public level and especially uh, public who have different religion, different belief, then simply, you see, the secular way, not follow religion. Uh, so India, uh, thousand years, almost all different world religion live together here in this country, basically very harmonious. Occasionally, little problem here and there. Uh, so now, uh, we should continue to keep uh, secular ethics. Okay. Another point I want to share, wherever I go, I always share. Now, global warming, uh, the Bahuna, one Indian thinker, Bahuna, my friend, he uh, gave me one responsibility. He told me, wherever you go, Himalayan range, you should tell people more greens, green. Mm -hmm. oh. Shingna, oh. oh. because global warming. So within next, uh, I think, uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, the global warming really become very, very serious. So plantation is very important. So now here, the, I saw, you see a lot of trees, wonderful. Oh. Good morning, Your Holiness. I am Kunla Gandhi. I am from Lamnon Model Senior Secondary School there. I study in 9th standard. My question is, so nowadays we have a lot of competition in today's world. These competitions in schools give rise to enmity, jealousy, and depression among the students. And nowadays, we are becoming self-centered. The students, they stop thinking about others, and they start thinking about themselves only. Unfortunately, our today's generation is forgetting about kindness, sympathy, <coughs> and humanity. So to what extent is this competition right, and how should we deal with this? Thank you, Your Holiness. Now, competi you. competition. Yes. It is useful. Now, for example, among Tibetan, uh, or say, big monastery who study uh, Buddha Dharma at least 20, 30 years. So with sincere motivation, competition very important. So uh, basic motivation is more compassionate. And as I mentioned earlier, oneness of 7 billion human beings. Then meantime, 
for your particular field sense of competition. Very useful. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you. Good morning, Your Holiness. My name is Asifta Razvi. I'm from Imamia Mission School. I study in 8th standard. It is my privilege to ask you this question. If we all are a part of universal consciousness, then why there are so many religions and schools of faith? Even physical level. You see, we all love food, but different people, different taste, and different kind of food is much more useful. Similarly, food for mind, these different philosophy, very useful. Uh, so then also, you see, you have the ability to sort of, or say, uh, more deeper thinking, or this philosophy say this, that philosophy is something different. What's the reason? Investigate, further investigate. So therefore, for development of human intelligence, different philosophy, very useful. In Tibet, we study all ancient Indian different tradition, different philosophy. So in order to sharpening your mind like that. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. In Tibet, Chapach, name Chapachwe Singh. Oh, he invented the way debate like this. Oh, now, debate always is try to find contradiction from the, uh, or say the uh, opposite. Chichi Yimorsa Yimbe Chir, Teina Teibe Chartal, like that. Very helpful. I also learn, you see, this technique debate. I think uh, my age 12, 13, I study debate. Very helpful. Very helpful. When we uh, practice debate, we always try to contradiction from the other person's sort of view. Always digging, digging, digging. Like that. So, uh, whenever some uh, contradiction views come, firstly we say, Korororo te korsum. Then raise uh, the point. Then finally, the other person, you see, found his view is some contradiction. Uh, he accepts them, then we say, tsa, tsa, tsa. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so we have, uh, we consider the debate is very important. When the debater, you see, recite some Buddha's own word, then at that time, as a Signs of respect, we kasa some you kasa remove your head, 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 uh, then listen. But meantime, uh, with great respect, even Buddha's own word, kasa uh, Good morning, Your Holiness. I am Patma Yutul from Eliza Jolton Memorial College, Leh. Today, I feel extremely privileged to get an opportunity to 
uh, ask you this question and my question is despite imparting moral education in educational institutions and parental control why most of the youths of Ladakh are victimized to drug abuse and alcohol addiction is there any alternate method to impart moral values thank you his Honours. now here since English uh, control India the Western education started. So not much thinking about our inner value. So uh, I am thinking now when I have the opportunity to go to Delhi, I am going to meet some professors like Joel Nehru University and some other university. How to combination modern education and thousand year old India's own uh, deeper sort of level of uh, thinking combine these two things. So I'm going to discuss with some professors in Delhi and particularly Western scholar who, uh, who carry more investigation about the human emotion. Uh, so they seek uh, knowledge from us. So uh, many occasions, some great psychologist and scientist about mind come to see me and uh, discuss. So, the thousand-year-old India's own knowledge about mind, about emotion, how to bring peace of mind, is very, very important. Uh, uh, this culture from India, but it needs humanity. When I was in Peking, uh, the German Mao, Mao Zedong, very close uh, with me, and he uh, appreciates my thinking more scientific way. So then Chairman Mo Zedong uh, told me, your mind is very scientific minded, wonderful. Religion is opium. Now in the society, you see person who are lacking some knowledge how to peace uh, insight. Then too much uh, anger, too much fear, and then too much alcohol. So this is lacking of knowledge how to give peace of mind. So our own thousand year old tradition uh, study uh, more about mind uh, and uh, as I already mentioned is uh, how to keep peace of mind then you see uh, no danger or oh, alcohol actually you see no knowledge how to keep peace of mind okay too much materialistic thinking and without knowing about our inner value. So these things, I think our younger generation, education, how to develop peace of mind, that is very, very important. That is not a religion. It's simply secular ethics. Okay, thank you. I really believe in modern education which exists in India now should add ancient Indian thought about mind, about emotion, how to keep peace of mind. As I already mentioned, I'm thinking to serious discussion with some professors in Delhi universities. Good morning, Your Holiness. I am Mariam Gurum of Moravian Mission School. And my question is, 
and my question is as we all know that real education requires concentration but it is very difficult in today's time as there are a lot of distraction so can you please suggest a simple or a basic solution for this thank you your holiness no i think you see we have uh, six uh, organ consciousness ka kong ese ba oh five then six the mind so materialistic life very much sort of uh, related with eye consciousness ear consciousness nose consciousness like that now our tradition we completely ignore seeing hearing these things thinking the sixth of mind that is a uh, uh, 1000 year old our tradition now thinking deeper level deeper level uh, okay of course is not nice to say myself but you see uh, thinking power uh, number of western scientist psychologist they really uh, want to know more from me thank you